Hi friends, Cynthia Wattwagon here. We're in Girona, Spain. I'm here with Dennis Van Vinden, my cycling coach from the Orange Hill Academy. And we're here to chat about ultra cycling and training and yeah, plans for the future. We have some changes. We're gonna be doing Unbound XL this year instead of the 560 because it was canceled. Yeah, that's what we're gonna chat about. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Classic ultra cycling, <sighs> the yeah. thing all the time. <laughs> Just, uh, I feel deja vu because we were at Atlas and I think I called you, they're going to cancel it or uh, what did I, I think, yeah, just that they delayed it yeah, and it now we're active. here again. Yeah. They delayed it and then they canceled it. So, um, well, tell me a little bit about you. We're in Girona where you live now. You're not from here though. Where are you from and how, how did you get involved with Orange Seal and the Academy and John Vargas, the owner? Yeah. Well, um... I am Dutch, so I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I was a professional cyclist on the road, though. Um, and when I signed my first pro contract, I moved to Girona because where I'm from in the Netherlands, training is not so ideal. I mean, the weather, I mean, if you look right now here in Girona, the weather is not optimal, but we had uh, at some parts here around Girona, we had a thousand days of no rain. And we are catching up right now, yeah. as you have seen. Um, so yeah, no, I used to race uh, on the road. So I've been 13 years uh, professional. I retired in 2020. And now I pivoted into an active uh, coaching career. So for the athletes that are doing the cross country, Sevilla, or doing the Grand Prix pace in Pete Stetna, Cole, um, Deanna and Samara, the, their training is obviously different from mine. We have, I'm sure, similar types of workouts, but how would you explain the difference between what they're doing and what I'm doing as an ultra endurance racer? So like, I mean, like what we have done as well, like for me, it's super important to understand what you truly desire, mm -hmm. like what you want, but also what fits with your type of personality, sure. physiology. Yeah. Like if you would tell me right now, Dennis, I want to go to world championships or uh, Olympics in LA yeah. for XCO, I would say, ah, you know, like, is that what you truly want? And come with, come up with a plan. Um, and I will be Dutch honest. And be and like, ah, Dutch you direct never make it. <laughs> that, uh, if I truly think that it's, uh, it's not a smart thing to do. Because like, if it's not, sustainable or you cannot keep the consistency up then is it truly worth it to dedicate your entire life in doing something mm -hmm. so like basically think macro think big yeah. about how you want to be somewhere now then for me the most important thing is health mm -hmm. because if you're not healthy nothing really matters yeah. then that you also enjoy it mm -hmm. and for me the way how i try to look at it once you retire or that you head into the off season, if then you will directly like throw your bike away or sell your bike, that is not what I want. Because like the people who I work with, they truly enjoy riding their bikes and I want them to continue yeah. loving and riding their bikes. Yeah, that's, I mean, what, that, that for me, I mean, is the, one of the biggest changes is that before I was riding so much, but maybe, not taking enough rest days or taking too many, depending on the timing. So I, I you know, for me that that's been a change and also just like f having structure from not working with a coach to going yeah. to work with a coach. We've like, we put structure in, um, but the structure that I'm doing, I'm guessing is very different from what maybe yeah. Sevilla is doing as the, you know, top cross country rider in the world right now. She's probably doing a lot harder efforts that are much more painful, I'm guessing, or maybe not. I don't know what I do feels pretty painful at times, but, um, but, but for you coming into this as the first endurance, like long endurance athlete that you've worked with, like how did that knowledge and how long did it take? And how did you feel about all of those? Like, was it exciting? The idea that you were going to learn about the, the long distance stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's, what I, what I did first of all, I mean, I already did some research about you because yeah. like, 
Uh, that's still my favorite story ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I already look at the, all of your Strava files. Like I, I, I did, uh, I did my research. But tell the yeah. story, so we. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like um, I looked into uh, for school. I was, um, I was looking into uh, pacing strategies, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I saw at that time it was, I think it, I had to look at it in the month after you won across Andes. Um, and you publish everything on Strava mm -hmm. and it's, you know, available. yeah, so it's available. So I downloaded those fit files and like I, I analyzed it and I was like, wow, I mean, with this training load, you get to this. And then like, if you saw the pacing, there was absolutely no pacing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you dropped, <laughs> there was an hour where you like, I don't remember it now from the top of my head because it's almost two years ago or it's a year and a half ago, but um, like you drop like 80% in performance. And I was like, <laughs> and she still wins with like big, big differences in front of, I mean, you were top 10 at the men. What were you, eighth? Yeah. I mean, so like, not that that is a, like uh, something crazy, but I mean, that is, I respect that a lot. It's amazing. So I was like, wow, if she actually would, understand the, the the fact of pacing mm -hmm. you would be really unstoppable yeah. um so and i think that is directly what uh what like a couple uh, half a year later or something we mm -hmm. we met for the first time yeah. maybe even longer maybe a year later after yeah yeah yeah, October. yeah. Big sugar. so yeah, yeah a year later so that was uh that was funny um and so yeah, the, the the difference between like let's take the example like uh, Olympic cross country, and yourself or like ultra distance is like for Savilia in this case. I want her to be able to completely destroy herself in an hour fifteen basically, and then try to finish the final five. Um, and with you. If you would be able to destroy yourself in five hours, you're in for a long one. Yeah. <laughs> so, like for you, you like we want you to be as efficient as possible, and for Sevilla, train herself to be efficient, but not so efficient because that means that your body sets governors that she is actually, you know, not able to deplete herself completely. If she would be able to wrench the towel out. In an hour and a half, perfect, that's it. That does not mean that she cannot ride over an hour and a half. No, not at all. But that is what we what we train for. Yeah. Yeah. And that is completely different than what we try to do with you. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's interesting to think about the, the workouts that she might be doing versus what I might be doing. And sometimes, you know, as a as a athlete on the academy, uh, thinking about, you know, the the time they spend on the bike and the time that I spend on the bike, you know, it, it's probably similar in time, but it's very different, uh, yeah. different goals. And I think it's very impressive that you, as a coach, can talk to and understand the goals of that many athletes on the academy. And it's been really great to work with you. It's been, yeah, it's only been a couple months, but I feel like we did Atlas, you know, and I won, and I felt pretty good about it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I always ask all my riders, you know, after the, the chit chat, like, what do you think what you need to do? Mm -hmm. Because, like, I have my idea, but I want to go into building the training plan, like what we mm -hmm. very rarely do over seven days, mm -hmm. um, because we go into small steps. Um, like, I want to go into that non-bias. I mean, I have my idea. Mm -hmm but you know more about how you feel that time, sure. like how you felt last week and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you come up with great ideas <laughs> and sometimes it's a good idea, but we're not going to do it yeah, yeah. Beca because of sure. the way how I think yeah. we should approach it. Well, with ultras, we pivot and we just found, you know, we have to learn how to be adaptable with ultra racing. Um, and we, you know, the 560 at the Traco is canceled because of weather. Yeah. And immediately 
uh, I was funny because we're in Girona where you live and we had talked on the phone and then maybe 10 or 15 minutes later I ran into you with your son Lars yeah. uh, and then we chatted a little bit more but um, you know I think you said something like okay well now we need to pivot yeah. maybe we do Unbound XL so uh, we're going to do Unbound XL I guess so you know uh, the training now was pretty I'm guessing pretty similar um, for Traca versus Unbound. I think the XL and Unbound is probably easier than the original Traca 560 route. Um, but what do we have? Two months now until then? A month? No, one month. It's May. Oh my gosh, we only have four weeks until. <laughs> you know what though? It'll be okay because I feel that that is enough time and also dealing with all of the issues that I had after Atlas with all of the injuries. I feel like a couple more weeks and I'll feel a little bit more in tip top for something like Unbound. It's a little bit sharper than than this. Um, yeah, what do, I don't know. What do you think? See, I'm doing it. I'm asking you what you yeah. think. <laughs> I mean, like the the funny thing is, like we always have to work with the facts, mm -hmm. and the fact is, where we have four weeks, mm -hmm. the fact is that you're ready to race this weekend, or you were ready to race yesterday. Yeah. But well, actually, two days ago. Is today Thursday? Yeah, I was ready to race yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have to always work with the facts. And the weather is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just wake up feeling shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and like when that happens, for me, if we have a key workout planned, you're not feeling good. I love your analogy. It's, it's, uh, how many espressos do you need to get through the workout yeah. today? Yeah. yeah. And if it's more than one or two, then maybe it's not the best day to do the workout. Yeah. 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 I think about that every time I'm getting ready to do a workout. I'm like, how many espressos would I need? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that comes out of my experience. I mean, I remember that I called uh, one of my, my previous coaches. Like, uh, oh, today I had to drink a monster to go to the gym. And he was like, I'm proud of you. And like, <laughs> right now I'm thinking like, he was proud of me that I actually needed to get a monster to get through my gym session. Mm. And when I'm thinking about it, man, I only did gym in December and January because then in February I was racing and mm -hmm. did not have enough access to gym. So I'm like, that I was already digging that deep at that time of the season. Mm. Why? Yeah. Like what was... And why was that also stimul like mm -hmm. because that when your coach is proud of you that mm -hmm. gives you is yeah. is a stimulus. Yeah. Definitely. Like that that is right now I'm thinking, man, that has been so wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean for sure in the next following days it was not that I took a rest week the week after. No, you just kept going. So like when sometimes we push through it, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. you can see it in training peaks, ah, today you will wake up tired. Yeah, but the goal fun. is to push through yeah. and like I think when you understand it mm -hmm. you never secondary question like ah oh, is this okay yeah. if you know this is a key workout need to be fresh mm -hmm. and you don't feel fresh no we postpone it by day two days a week yeah. doesn't matter mm -hmm. like we want to have the maximum the maximal function out of a stimulus right Okay, my last question uh, before I let you go, and we maybe we talk about the 360 route, even though they've got a provisional update. Um, it's funny, I'm adapting, having to learn the 560, then they changed the route. Um, but, you know, that's, that's racing. Uh, we've got transcontinental this summer, which is 10 to 11 days, hopefully. That's, you know, three to 400K a day, which is a lot. Um, a lot. I've never done anything like that. So for me, it's a new it's a new experience for you. Also, with this training, you haven't done any sort of plans um, from the two races that are shorter, Unbound and Transcontinental. How do you think things will change prepping for? Not sorry, the two races, the Traca and Unbound. How do you think things are going to change in terms of like training for the for the longer Transcontinental race? Well, we, we've for sure before Unbound, we will already implement like stuff what we need to like, we always work with milestones mm -hmm. and we always need to check off boxes mm -hmm. to be at the start line, mm -hmm. like having the, you know, the, the fact that when you're there, that the confidence is good enough that you are at the start line ready to race. Mm -hmm. So, we we need to already check some boxes not all the boxes but 
you know, in the next four weeks. Otherwise, it's not that we are just training, okay, we decoded the race demands for unbound, so that is for right now full four weeks or full focus. I mean, you cannot ignore the rest of the season. So we need to check some boxes, maybe just half check them, but we need to start working. Yeah. Um, and that will have no big influence on, or you're not going to be missing out on certain stimulus before the unbound race. Mm -hmm. So we like we need to already start working on sometimes, absolutely yeah. Yeah. Well, more, more time in the no, we need to master the right recovery and we still cannot um, yeah ignore like important facts mm -hmm. for unbound yeah oh, unbound it's gonna be hot it's gonna be hot so, it's gonna be hard yeah looking forward to it uh, will, you, will you be at Unbound? Yeah. No, this no? year I won't be. Uh, oh. I won't be there. Okay. Well, we'll miss yeah. you there. Um, but good to see you here. Thanks yeah. for chatting. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry that they uh, decided on canceling the 560, but pivoted into a, maybe an even better plan. Yeah. Start already. Checking painting. the half boxes for <laughs> boxes. Unbound. Unbound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate Please. it. Cheers. Thank you.